in the year two. God is getting in your life and starting to mess you up. Because Jesus needs a house that is willing to harvest. He needs a people that are willing to get out there and to do the will and the work of God, that are willing to die to themselves, that are willing to say, God, it's not my life. I've been bought with a price. That are willing to say, Jesus, at any cost, whatever the soul costs me, God, I'm willing to sacrifice that not one person will be banished away from eternity with you. God is raising and doing something in our hearts this year. God is meddling in our hearts and our minds this year. God is moving in our lives and trying to get us to the place where we are actually willing to surrender our lives instead of continue to possess what should not be ours. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Well, you might be saying, I don't understand. Well, I'm saying I don't understand either. But I learned a long time ago, you don't go ahead of God. You just kind of wait. When he tells you to rock on, then you go on. But I don't understand what's going on right now, but God is doing something in people's lives right now. God is moving in people's lives. And if you're not attuned, then what's going to happen is you're going to start looking around. Come on now, get in tune with the Holy Ghost. God is doing something this morning. Father, whatever you're doing, continue. Thank you, Jesus. One thing I liked about this organization, too, was they're doing what we're doing, and that is they believe in equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. They gave different testimonies of when they go to Brazil. We're going to send a whole team of kids to Brazil this year in the month of April. They just don't know yet. Say amen. What was really exciting was they're doing what we're doing in this house, and they're training you that God wants to move in your life in the supernatural. It's not about some superstar. It's about the stars of God, the sons and daughters of God, doing the works of God. And God said, if you believe that you shall cast out devils, you shall speak with new tongues. If you touch any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. And when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. That's not for the preachers. That's for the believers. If you're a believer, shout, I am. This is what God has for you. Oh, I was excited because an 18-year-old kid stood up and he said, I, I was part of a nominal church that didn't even really preach the gospel. He says, I wasn't even saved. And he went on this missions trip. And while he was on this missions trip, he got saved quick. And, and, and he started doing what they told him to do, and that was lay hands on sick people. He went to a skate park, and this kid that was in a, uh, one of the competitions messed his knee up at the skate park. And he walked over to the kid, lay hands on the kid, and God healed the kid's knee. And then God healed every other one that was sick in that place. And that whole skate park was shouting for the glory of God. It's time to recognize in the year of harvest, God is going to raise you up and bring you to a place of discomfort outside of your fleshly realm. But the only way to do that is to start living it right now. It's to allow God to get in your heart and start living through you right now. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about what we can do. It's what he can do. Shout amen. God wants to challenge your life. James chapter 1, verse 22 is the verse for the year. i got to preach quick. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Let's say it again. Ready? But be ye and not deceiving yourself. I believe in the house of God. I believe in the church of Jesus Christ. I believe in the church of America. We've deceived ourselves a lot. It's all about getting to heaven, but I want you to know if it was all about getting to heaven, baby, when you accepted Christ, you'd already died. But you're not in heaven. You are on earth. But the greatness is that the kingdom of God is within you, that you are seated in heavenly places with, with Christ Jesus, and that God has a call on your life, you and you alone. God has something in your heart to bring forth. He has people in your life that only you can reach, and there's a necessity for the church to start abandoning ourselves and go after him. 
One of the concerns that I've had and one of the things that the Spirit of God was telling me that's dangerous is this is the whole year to live it. I believe that some of you need to be challenged in this aspect. And that is that in this year to live it, that you're not living it for the wrong reasons. There are a lot of people living things. Many of you have come from different liturgical style church backgrounds where it's a bunch of do's and don'ts. Some of you, if you do this right, then you're going to heaven. If you say this right, you're going to heaven. If you don't jump through this hoop, then you're not going to heaven. But I'm here to tell you it's not by works of righteousness which you have done. It's by the blood and the power of Jesus' name. Shout amen. Amen. This morning, we are living it for one reason. We're living it because someone died for it so we can do it. Without the death of Jesus, without him willing to die for it, we would never be able to live it. I've seen Christians, they come in, or people that have come in and they've heard the gospel, and what's happened is they've slid into a life of legalism. And what legalism is, is where you and I try to be better than we are. I've got news for everyone in this room. Jesus will never love you more today than he did when you hated him. Jesus will never love you more right now than the drunk who went out, got partied last night, got messed up last night, went out and caroused around all night long. Jesus will love you no more right now than when you are holier than you were last year. The love of Jesus never changes. The love of Christ does not change. And many times in our walk with God, it's easy to be tantalized. It's easily to be titillated that we have a thought process that we are more holy or that God loves us more the more the right things that we do. And that is not true. The book of Isaiah declares that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and none of yourselves. Shout, it's not about me. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anybody should boast. Today, Jesus has called us to live it and not by your own strength, not by your own ability, not by your own poise, not by your own righteousness. Jesus has called us to live this gospel through his power, through his anointing, through his righteousness. And right now, if you're born again, and if you are, shout I am. I am. Then you and I can stand before the very throne of God. How? Because we are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and absolutely nothing else. Come on, give Jesus praise. We're living this thing for the wrong reason, then you're going to be very disappointed. Anticlimatical. I've seen brides, they, they're all excited about getting married. They come to the preacher, they go through their premarital counseling, they drop up to, I hope you know that the average wedding now is about $15,000. They get everything all set, they get everything all ready. They, everything looks good, man. They, they spent all their money, they look beautiful. They spent all the time getting the right wedding dress for a few thousand dollars that they're going to wear for a few hours. They pick out the right food. They pick out the right cake. They pick out all the right things. Then they march down the aisle. And it happens so quick for many brides, for many people that get married. It's an anticlimatical situation where they had everything rack and pinioned on what they were going to do. And when that was over, it was over. I'm here to tell you, That if you and I start living this gospel by what we can do, it's going to be very anticlimatical. Because how many of you know you're going to fail? How many have ever sinned before? How many have sinned before? How many have sinned more than once before? 
Anybody who doesn't raise their hand has just sinned. 